Welcome. My name is Jeff Moore, and this is the Patriot Wall. Let's get right at it, shall we? This process is called the lamination process. So we're getting boards together, and we're also um, we had to make the table that we were going to glue the boards up on. We had to make that nice and flat. We had a bunch of glue and stuff. Everything was like kind of stuck on there, and. So we decided to scrape that all off and have a nice flat surface to apply the paper, which is right here. Then of course we lay the boards on and prepare for the uh, the glue up. So what I was trying to do was to get both boards glued up so that they were an individual section. The thinking is to have the two halves become the whole. And then I would begin the carving process once those two were joined. Temporarily, that is. This is the second part of our wall. After we get this glued up, we're going to do a little trimming and we're going to lean that thing up against this one. And then we're going to join them in the back so that they're, you know, they're the same. And so then we'll lean them back. Uh, not join them with glue, but just simply put a couple of screws in there to just lock them together so they're tight enough when we go to we go to work on these things. I don't have a gap in the middle. <laughs> then it's a matter of getting all the artwork done. Um, that's a big job right there. I got to lay this thing out, you know, freehand uh, to some extent. And I want the wings of the eagle, as you can see here. This one's coming off. I want the wings of this eagle to kind of lift off of the wall. Ah, uh, the drawing process. You know, in high school and when I was a little boy, uh, growing up, actually, all the way back to when I, my earliest memories were with a pencil in my hand or Crayolas or me drawn in the sand or the dirt, mostly dirt, probably. Um, I just uh, have always been really creative um, and I just had a compulsion like, I don't know, like I'm compelled to draw and to create and make shadows and light work, you know. And somehow, and I finally figured it out as a young adult that, um, that you know, carving wood was a great way to to get it done, you know, to calm the beast <laughs> that lurked inside of me. I needed to express myself. And uh, so the drawing that you're looking at right now is really, it's not going to be the end result. It's just me placing some, some thought uh, to what size the things that are going to be on there are going to be roughly and just trying to figure things in and uh, just the swirls and shadows it, it's just is really it's I probably could have started with just a, a rough shape but this day I was just you know I had a couple students there um, with me at my shop and um, they were doing their thing and I was doing my thing and I was talking to them as you can see <laughs> uh, they have questions and uh, as I'm I'm carving away here. I mean, drawing away here. And uh, I'm while I'm drawing, I'm I'm trying to put the, the space between, you know, between the sketch of the wood and the actual uh, carving itself. Um, here I'm carving the first mock-up of the head, and there was several, and I actually the one that's that I'm carving here is just a mock-up. Obviously, the angle's wrong. Um, I wasn't quite sure what angle it was going to be, so I just grabbed a piece of scrap and just kind of put it on there. You can see some of my uh, drawing or my uh, 
reference material in the back. Those are my favorite ones to use. So. Just trying to get as much as I can done with my battery saw, which is the Steel Lightning Series. I believe that's an MS140, MSA140, with uh, a dime tip, or I'm sorry, it's smaller than a dime tip. Uh, that would be a Samurai Legend. Here, my wife and I are laying out the the wing that I thought I was going to do. So I, this was my preliminary wing deal, and then I had to make them flat uh, with my joiner to, so that we have a nice uh, seamless, um, you know, a, a, a seamless seam, if that makes any sense. Um, so here I am laying out the rest of the body, um, trying out, trying different positions, looking at that, um, so on a side note, the the head had to be dead dead in the middle of those two boards. So if you recall, the there's two boards that are glued together, but then they're in the center, they're not glued together. So um, when we did install, all we had to do was pull the head off, and you could just once one screw pulls the head off. The legs uh, were glued, but they were on either side of the. Uh, the seam in the center so there's a good look at the the diff the, a different head that I actually went with at the right angle remembering to not glue pieces over that crack was uh, a bit of a challenge for me I gotta say this is the patriotic wall I call it I don't know what else the file on my computer says patriotic wall and so it's um, I'm just about to begin the carving process. Um, everything's pretty much laid out. I gotta do a little bit more. I think I gotta add a couple of things um, to either side of the neck of the bird because I really just did it out of a six by six. And then of course, as I carved this bird head that I liked enough to put on there, it turned out that, you know, I, I pushed the limits and it wasn't quite far enough. So I've got to make a couple of add-ons so that it looks more tapered, seamless, hopefully. Uh, it'll be seamless. You won't be able to see it, I don't think. Anyway, um, and of course, it's got to be totally separate from the backdrop because once this thing gets installed, I'll add the, the head. Because it, it can't come apart if the heads, because it heads right in the middle on the center line. Maybe you can see it. I don't know, but there's a seam in the center, and that's deliberately um, there, so we can have a much easier install. And uh, it's going up about eight, eight and a half feet, something like that. It's going up eight and a half feet, and it's five by seven. But uh, so we've got a lot of things on the fire or on, you know, back burner, side burner, front burner, oven, microwave, the whole thing. So um, we've got our letters laid out. Uh, we got a basic representation of the soldier that's going to be up there. Everything's going to change when I start carving because as I start getting into the depth, all that goes away and then. It's just a uh, roll the dice on how I'm going to position them. And, you know, uh, so we're just, we're just going to use the lighting in the shop, which is basically set up for carving. So that's cool. Um, I've done thousands of carvings in here. It seems like probably a few hundred, but um, I like to say thousands just because, just because it sounds more impressive, but really I've done a lots, lots and lots of carvings in this light and uh, so I can shut off partial sections and get the ambient light right and get the where the light's supposed to be coming from um, and sand and do all that stuff to bring out the shadows and then that really helps me when I go to when I go to paint because it kind of speaks to me before I even put color to it so I already know where all the uh, you know the form is going to speak to to me and 
and so is all of the shadow and light. And it's going to help me figure out where I'm going to do things. But um, that in a nutshell, uh, lots of crazy things. I had to reorder um, epoxy. Um, we use SC110. You can pick it up on um, eBay. You know, imagine that. You can buy something on eBay for your business. But we do. Um, it's SC110, it's out of Texas, I believe. So we just ordered an extra, another three gallons. Um, it goes a long way when you're laminating it. It's, it's self leveling and it's super strong. Uh, I gotta put another piece in here. I made this piece, I had to precision cut this one so that it fits right smack against it. We're gonna have another one here. So um, basically, it's just gonna be a taper so this bed can taper off into the shoulder. Um, and then I've got to relief card the whole thing. The whole thing. You know, lighting is super crucial and you know, I have things laid out to the point where I think I can probably get going on this thing. I was really kicking the tires so long on this project that I was just like, okay, how am I going to do this? And I was, part of me knew um, that if I just went with these, these, you know, typical, you know, flat wings with the detail carved in there, I was not going to be happy. I don't think I, I was going to get the, the beautiful um, lighter than air kind of look um, and I and it's so hard to get the layered wings to look like that you know if it's one piece so um, basically I uh, so here I, when I said lighting is important um, I've moved it out where I can really see the shadow better um, plus I wanted to move through the piece a little bigger or a little better so I just grab my trusty uh, gouge and kind of just took some layers off so I can get closer to the you know where I needed to start with the backdrop and with this um, lighting I could also tell that I was not going to be happy with how the tail I wanted the tail to kind of scoop out you know or scoop like have the have the feathers bent or like Kind of not bend, but like come at you out of the carving a little better uh, than just laying them in there flat and using what's there on the board. So that's exactly what I did. You know, you know I started a, to abandon the whole carved feather, carved wing thing. Um, so I contacted my good buddy Corey Warden, who had done similar projects in the past where he he's been doing a he did a bunch of them actually uh, that's kind of his thing so I was gonna borrow some of his knowledge for a bit and uh, he was more than happy to help me out so thanks Corey so um, the, uh, the neck is you so I just took a gouge to the neck the taper the neck back and now I'm laying in uh, some some definition actually getting rid of some material so I don't have as much to play with I want those wings to be uh, kind of delicate because it's not going outside this thing is going to be inside a house so I'm not too too concerned about that and um, here I am putting in some of those those feathers um, this is not at all meant to be a super accurate uh, you know, depiction of an eagle. I know guys that could do it, but I certainly am not. Um, here I am lay, uh, putting in the, the the leg portion that will be obviously the claws will be of the talons and the, the feet, I guess, will be attached to those. But I had to keep reminding myself not to cover that middle seam. You do not want to glue over that. That would be a bad thing because um, I need to be able to pull that head off because there's only one screw holding on holding that head on so um, and then we have the two sides so everything needs to pull off and so that we can free up um, the the two sides to, to transport and to install 
this would have been really tricky to pick up if it was all one piece with all the feathers and everything so um, all the feathers were carved individually and then we had to pull those um, you'll see coming up a little bit uh, we had to carve the feathers individually for the wings here I am not liking the feathers I mean the ones on the bottom I'm like yeah that's not too bad it's kind of what I'm looking for but it's just not dramatic enough for me so after I think I quit that day at one point and just I figured I'd have to go I, I need to talk to Corey about this because I'm starting to get a little nervous <laughs> so here's what I know so far I know I didn't like the wings that were on there I had them on there and uh, basically they just looked flat and, and awkward and uh, they didn't look light and airy I wanted to have like a lighter than air kind of look and so with with this technique which I learned from a friend of mine Corey Warden um, at the US Open uh, here in Wisconsin uh, I watched him do two eagles fighting and he did this feather technique and I'll tell you what it looked gorgeous it made them look like they were just like they could really fly so I I talked to him a little bit about it he kind of gave me a heads up on how to do it what to expect and uh, it's just a lot of tedious work carving and sanding and fitting each feather um, has its challenges uh, but I think the outcome is going to be far more impactful than if I were to just carve a single piece of wood and lay everything in there you know this is going to be a dynamic piece with a lot of uh, you know uh, I guess a lot of shadow and a lot of subtleties but yet we're gonna have some attitude and uh, some depth like give this thing a crazy amount of depth I mean this this is this board is three inches thick so I have to add a few little pieces on like the, the wings this is obviously where the feathers are gonna be coming down as well as there and also the tail feathers and then the whole back going to be relief carved on a three inch board but what I want to do is just make you lose your mind when you look at it lose the fact that it's a relief carving at all and just think the image so it won't matter if it's carved or if it's painted or if it's whatever um, the image is what you're going to remember because it it's a powerful image with the right kind of contrasting shadow and light and color and, and I want that to pop out more so than the fact that it's a wood carving. It's art first to me and then the fact that I use wood is just a whole, it's just my medium. So uh, it would make a cool drawing, it would make a cool painting, it would make a, you know, but I think with the shadows and, you know, the emotional impact, especially a lot of veterans and, you know, patriots around the, the country would really dig this and I think, um, so this is for them and, and uh, for my customer who's like a serious patriot. So um, thanks Corey Warden for giving me this idea. Like I said, he did not, he did not like create the idea. Um, and but he, he plays around with it. He does a pretty dang good job. I mean, better than I can do it. But, you know, I'm, I'm working up to that level where I'm not going to let it out of this shop unless it looks great. So, uh, individual feathers, carved, fitted, sanded, mess with, you know, I don't know how many times we're going to have to carve. I've, we've, I've probably got 100 feathers and I'm probably only going to use... I don't even know. I mean, a hundred feathers so far. <laughs> and we're just on this side, so we're, we're having some fun uh, figuring that out. But uh, until um, everything's done, I guess we're not going to realize what it's going to look like. I mean, I have a kind of a clue, but we're just going to see what's what. And then eventually when it's all done, I am going to find out if it's going to be something that I'm going to want to keep wood tone or if I'm going to want to 
do a patina or if I'm just gonna wanna maybe braise it with flame. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing yet. So I gotta do the lettering um, or the land of the free on the bottom and I also have to do the soldiers in the background with the smoke and the, you know, the old glory up there waving. So I, I, I know I have to use infuse some color, but how much, I don't know. If someone were to ask me what I'm gonna do with this, I would just say I hope it looks good when it's done and I hope customers like it. That's about as far as I can go because I have no clue. But I do have a direction. So anyway, so that's where we're at. So enjoy some of that speedy footage that we're about to throw down. You know, I feel like um, I had a better idea of what I was gonna do at this point after um, talking with my um, my friend about this, Corey Warden. He's, by the way, he's with Beneath the Bark Chainsaw Carving. He's out of Alabama and uh, he does some really cool things and he's uh, he's been a friend for a long time. So we talk about project once, projects occasionally and um, I was really wanting to try this and super duper nervous because this was so yeah this is a, a road I never traveled on and I wasn't sure uh, what I should be doing or how I'm supposed to do it and I, I talk, probably talked to him about it three or four times he just kept re reassuring me yeah you got this bro you got this so I was like whatever um, I did uh, I had my student uh, Bill Canziora was here um, at the, the shop and uh, he's helping him out quite a bit with making all the feathers you know I, I laid out the original uh, shape and, and contours and things and he was you know just mass producing them because there was a lot of them and um, and then I just had to take one by one and custom fit them in there so at this point I am now bold enough to begin my my uh, quest to carve the characters in the background and lay them in um, a little bit more as you can see things are going on uh, we're getting some um, interesting textures moving through the whole piece as from the bird to the background to uh, the characters and I did this um, like 99.9% .9 all saw and you know basically a uh, little bit a little bit of dremel a little bit of chisel but on, the, on their little faces, but that's about it. Um, you know, it's it's pretty much all that little bitty saw, that little bitty MS-140, or the MSA, I'm sorry, the MSA-140, the MSA-120, with little tiny bars on them. Uh, little Samurai Legends, or I'm sorry, Samurai Legends. Um, and I just, you know, I just absolutely love that saw, and I love you know, there's not much power there, but you really don't need it uh, for a little tiny setup like that. You know, torque will be inherent with a tiny setup like that. So, you know, and it, as you can see, there's, you know, you're able to do quite a bit of detail. I, I, I kind of wanted to keep this whole thing. I don't know if you can deduct this or deduce this, the, that I want this, you know, this the thing to look kind of like a sketch. It kind of has that sketch quality with the shadow and the light, and um, and I kind of want to get that from all of my carvings. Um, it's so important, at least to me. I mean, I oh there you go. There's a little Dremel there, or not Dremel, but uh, die grinder. But that's about the extent of it. You know, there's a little bit here and there. Um, sometimes oh I flap sanded it. You know, but the carving aspect was. There's very little other power tools other than saw, as you can see. Getting the depth and uh, re-establishing some of the key features that I thought about in my head, you know, when I was thinking of the project initially. Um, it's so fun to get in there and really find a find a path. And then once I call it bird dog, and it's like you sniff around, you sniff around, you know. And eventually, the bird dog will key in on the the prey, and 
it's all over but the crying after that. So here I am just using a little mini bell sander to, to add some flats to, to draw the light. As you can see, it really uh, makes for, uh, it, it brings out the light. So there's contrast between the fore foreground and the background, or you know, just the different characters um, against the textured uh, everything. Everything's textured, right? So um, I'm just playing around with different concepts here with swirls. So there's bombs bursting in air. There's there's huge mounds of dirt that are being blown up behind them. They're running, you know, uh, the the soldiers are running um, and there's flame and there's there's fire. and it, So the, the cool thing is that texture up there and in the corner, I, I wanted to, I, 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 what can I do? To make something look like sound, I don't know. I don't, you know, there's so much texture going on. It's got to be, you know, to me that's just like when you go to the fireworks and you hear, you know, when it, when there's a dud, that sound that it makes. That's what it kind of reminded me of. So like as I was carving, I'm like, well, what's one of those sound like or look like that you could, you know, see the sound? And that's what I came up with anyway. So. So a little bit more chisel work just to crisp up some of the the features. Uh, the back soldier holding his his firearm, and and you can see off to the left, more shadowed area is more like the flame, uh, and all the flame is kind of licking up the front, right off the back of the bird. And so they're kind of in the mix. Uh, could be tall grass could be flame you know it's really up to the viewer to decide so as I'm softening the flag so I have some soft contrast over that really you know rough background with uh, all the deep the deep uh, well, there's some more sound going on under the flag there so I wanted to have this thing be a, a texture fest and uh, it's I just love doing it. it. To me, it just makes me feel really good to just lay lines in or you know, textures, and sh shadows, and unique features. Um, I think it's critical to my existence, <laughs> say the least. I've been doing this a long time, and this is the part that is the funnest for me, I think. Watching it come together, watching the shadows pop, watching the highlight up here out of nowhere you know and then I decide what's going on I decide what's first what's the second what's you know, last and what's important and what isn't important and um, and everybody else just when you look at it you know that's the beauty about being an artist you know you look at something and you can decide for yourself what's important other people might see it and they can be critical of it but that's okay they didn't carve it um, this was something that was fun for me. So my hat is off to anyone that challenges the norms and goes out there and is just who they are artistically or whatever. So yeah, it's important and it's critical to my sanity and I'm sure it's critical to their sanity as well. So. I would love to um, have everyone just be a part of something as wonderful as creation. Um, I just, I don't know, I, I believe that if everyone could do it, um, if everyone just tried, no matter even if you're bad at it, I think it would be just brilliant. Um, and everyone would be a little bit happier, if not a lot happier. I think it's inc it's an incredible honor to be able to, you know, um, work for such amazing customers, and uh, you know they let me cut loose and just be as crazy as I want to be. <laughs> so I mean, this is um, this is you know within the realm of normalcy, but not so much uh, something you'd see every day. I mean, for us carvers, you know, we look at, we can see, you know, 
the process and go, oh yeah, I know that one. But it's, it's uh, my process. It's the one that I chose, you know what I mean? So, um, and it's the one that I had to either perfect or <laughs> uh, I don't know, struggle with, I guess. But in the struggle comes the perfection, the imperfection, I should say, makes it perfect in my book. So I'm laying these letters out and just having a blast. Um, it's, it's, you know, the wood was handling the crisp lines okay. It wasn't the best, but it just, and it didn't need to be because of the style of the carve. So it was a very, um, you know, rough carve. Basically, it's, this is not a refined thing, but in the end, I wanted the, the fineness to pop. You know from the bird the subtleties the softness of the feathers um, against the rugged textures in the background you know I've decided that chainsaw carving um, like any other art form I suppose is just a exercise in revision <laughs> revision 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 um, and change like I, how many times have I changed this? I don't know, just so many times I've changed this. The, uh, the textures, the base, um, the base like meaning the background. Um, I know for a fact that the wings are going to be covering a lot of that, so I'm like, you know, why it just doesn't work for me. So I'll, I'm just going to go ahead and and uh, kind of like make this more basic and simplistic. Uh, so it's it's not so much contradicting contradictive movement uh, and here I am fixing the uh, cracks and holes and stuff what was interesting is I had this old piece of wood that I I'm like you know what I'm just gonna carve this this head you know I'm just gonna use this old thing as a practice and it turned out good enough and I was like well you know this thing's been in my shop for about 15 years so I'm sure it's plenty dry and so it just had some old holes and worms holes, I should say, and cracks, things like that. So I just, I just dialed them up. Um, interesting indeed. You know, a little backstory about the customers. Um, they were initially wanting me to carve them in uh, an eagle bench, and I was going to incorporate, you know, something along the lines of say a bicentennial type thing, um, you know, with the, and I was going to use fragmented elements in the bench um, to really bring home the fact that it was it wasn't trying too hard to be um, anything but you'll get the gist like when you see a scroll of paper with the pen you know the feather pen and uh, you know I, I was looking forward to doing that but you know when when they decided that they did not have enough room then this wall project she uh, actually initiated it so um, oh here we are uh, this is something another thing I was like well, how am I gonna put these talons on these feet and um, so what I did was I basically carved out a basic you know four toed uh, thing and then I added slices carved out or you know took my took little pieces of pine dried pine and put them on a little bandsaw and, and made shapes that I wanted you know and um, then I just kind of use a chainsaw to, to make the slot and uh, clean the slot out just a little bit with the um, with a chisel just to make it fl a flat chisel just to make sure you know there was just enough um, just so there wasn't any weird bumps or something just to clean it up a little bit so and then uh, basically they, those 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 talons just snap right in uh, like a pressure fit it they they were perfect man if you, as you can see they just pop right in there and then I lock it in and and, and uh, once I glue them in I put a little uh, like a brad nail just in there just to hold it tight but man I'm telling you those things they fit wonderfully and they're strong they're not like just glued onto the tip of the toe so you know they're embedded into the foot as you can see the on the right hand side there's there's some uh, 
of the uh, talons I cut out that are going to be placed on the other foot. And uh, so the seam, I got to remind myself also that the seam is in the, between the legs so that there's no, there's no glue or boards or anything going over top of those legs. I mean over top of the seam. That would be bad. Uh, like I said, I kind of constantly realize that I have to separate this thing when I'm done. I'm gonna keep working on this thing until I'm happy. I guess happy is a relative term, I guess. Um, so, as you can see, we have finished the feather work and laid them in and uh, fit them um, accordingly. Uh, it was tricky, but it was so rewarding. I just absolutely love doing it. It just made everything come to life because now you have these really nice smooth textures um, contrasting all of the background and um, so interesting and I was very like pleased you know there's probably a, a, a million things I could have done differently uh, or even could have done a lot better but it all needed to be um, I, let's just call it a perfect world scenario. It needed to be perfect for itself. It didn't need to be. If I would have carved one thing perfectly, it would have it would have looked weird <laughs> on this on this piece. So everything you know, there's a certain consistency that comes along with you know if if you have a style or if you have a you know thing like I do with textures, you know, and I think it's critical to maintain that across the board while still mixing it up with some some you know allowing areas to gather light like to catch the light like the the top of the eagle's head and the wings and parts of the flag and maybe even parts of the uniforms and just a little light dancing across the background really helps make it pop along with really distinctive shadows dark undercuts like underneath the flag and you know and some of the areas um, in the background but here I am laying in the other side just kind of putting in some textures and you know it didn't it didn't I didn't want to go so crazy on this thing that um, that I you know I didn't want to paint myself into a corner that, you know, it's, it, it would have, it would have, A, it wouldn't have been as fun, and B, um, nothing else would have matched. So I just, I just had to kind of keep that same consistent uh, imperfection going. <laughs> I am imperfect, I am imperfection personified. So laying in these feathers and and doing this so i got the little band file the band saw or the uh yeah band file mini belt sander and basically what i'm doing is creating smaller details because i know i'm, I'm going to have to uh, dry brush this so unfortunately all this gets painted black and then i have to bring the color out um, the dry brush technique so the center feather as you can see the seam going down the middle of the body. The, sether, the, the feather in the center of the tail is a linchpin. So once you pull that, um, it, it can come apart. So uh, it's really interesting. The, the feet are actually add-ons um, that you can take off, not the legs per se, but the feet, definitely. The head comes off. Um, all the feathers come off and then the whole piece breaks in half and then you can you know move it and put it back together somewhere else but, uh, here I'm just now looking at this thing saying what did I just do how oh yeah so we're adding the stars on the corners yeah to make it look like an old barn wood and and uh, I put textures in with my saws and added the stars I think it looks I think it kind of has an old world feel but you can see it has a lot of depth and that's what I was shooting for here's uh, 
some different views with the right lighting. I'm really proud of this piece. Oh, now we're into the painting. It's been a long day prior to this, a long day day before I was long, every other day before that was long. I'm prepared now to um, paint, so I have to blow all, any sawdust uh, off of there. So that, you know, that took a little bit just to free up all the little particles and little places that it was packed into. Now I just decided to uh, have at it and start painting. Now the cool thing about the paint process is uh, it allows you to see the work, believe it or not, even more so than if I hadn't. Because the paint, the black paint, allows you to see your work. A lot of the work gets hidden by grain and incorrect light or, you know, incorrect shadow technique or whatever. A lot of that work, all those lines and all the details are gone from the grain because of the grain, the, t the coloration, the inconsistencies in the coloration. So when you paint it one color, in this case black, um, it really is the, uh, the best way to see your work. Um, it, it, I don't know if you saw that, but I had a, uh, my air hose and I, what I would do when I found a place I couldn't get my brush into, i just take the air hose and blast the brush itself, put the brush in front of the, the divot in the wood or whatever you can't get into and just... It, pushes like almost like an airbrush just kind of takes it off the brush the physical brush and blast the air hose blast it into the crevice so that works out pretty cool so here we are just doing a little touch up seeing how things match up because I'm about ready to start the dry brush technique um, that I was talking about now this particular piece I think had two coats of black latex flat which I wish I could go back in time and just have it more of a oh see what I mean now you can really see the the depth and all the work um, so here comes I'm going I'm laying in a, a lighter tone because everything on top of that has to pop so if you put the color on top of the black it has a hard time popping out but I will disclose this one thing. I am very disappointed in how the camera didn't pick up the colors. It just, it's, everything just got washed out. You, know, you could see them in real life easily. I mean, when, and when it was totally done, it looked just like a bronze. Um, that was the effect I was shooting for. Just like a, a, a bronze casting or something, I don't know, uh, of this patriotic thing that could be you know 100 years old or it could be brand new by carbs carved by some schmuck in Wisconsin so this um, this technique as you can see it just brings all of the highlight out and and the idea is to keep the depths uh, a darker tone uh, which is the original black and then Slowly but surely, once you get the the top on, you can uh, the top colors. You know, to, so you need a lighter color underneath whatever color you're going to put on just to make it pop better. But you still need to capture uh, the the depth, the patina part. So that is the uh, the gist of doing this. Get the top part there. And so, by the way, the the uh, the process I'm using is called the dry brush technique, and this I am using. Uh, believe it or not, I'm using rattle cans. Um, I really like how the rattle can um, uh, type of paint um, when it goes over top of the bird. It is definitely a. I guess it's it's a. Uh, uh, it, it pops more like so I've used watercolors 
or not watercolor, but uh, latex, over latex, and it just gets drowned out. It gets muted, I suppose, is a good word. Um, there we go. Now you can start to see some of that contrast and actually see the work. And um, So it's just laying in like a cream color here. Well, you know, I, I'm always I'm always thrilled to watch the uh, the dry brush technique, you know, in in fast motion because you know I I know what it's like to paint um, something and um, it takes a long time because it's layer after layer and here I am watching it happen like light speed. This is great. <laughs> I wish it was wish this was reality, but it's it's uh, it's a great process and it really you know it makes you proud of yourself when especially when you have your detail orientated um, you know that was that's the way you're you're kind of programmed and so it's really cool to um, when you hit it with the brush it's like this relief like ah, that's the way I wanted it oh yeah that's you know and so it kind of programs you for the next piece you can literally, um, oh, here we go. believe it or not, see what I'm saying? Like this thing has already been painted, um, but now I'm I'm adding color to it, so it doesn't look like it. So see what I mean? It's like very, the light is just not the camera is not agreeing with anything I'm doing. You can barely see any color whatsoever. So disappointing as far as that's concerned. My apologies. Um, because this really was a, a, it looks so much like a real bronze, you know, it had that antique bronze look to it with just a light color tone, um, you know, even gets worse when the, when the light's on it, sunlight. It is, it is what it is, and, you know, it, I, I wish I could change it, um, I do have some pretty solid pictures, however, of the uh, after. And I, and even the photographs, um, the light washes, you know, your, the human eye can see everything, but the camera for some reason, maybe it's my, my camera's not really that good, but uh, I don't know. Putting a little splash of color. So I wanted also in the in the flag you can see the stars and stuff, but I wanted to um, well you can see a little blue. I wanted to use different um, textures to represent color. I'm using textures to represent sound and emotion. So all those things are happening in this carving, you know. And as I was going, that's my mentality. But I don't think people really. Uh, when they they view it, they just see this really cool thing. Look at how washed out that is. How insane. It's just this fast motion is sort of like how I feel inside my head when I'm painting. It's very... <sighs> it's crazy. Incredible. Well, everyone, it's a wrap. Um, we are about to disassemble and do a few touch-ups and deliver. So we're so happy that this one is done and you know in the books. And uh, I really want to thank everyone for tuning in and watching this um, happen. I know there's a lot of spots in there that that were just like, "What is going on?" I was thinking the same thing, like. I'm out of my mind with some of the stuff. I'm thinking, why am I doing this? Why, why? Well, there's a reason why. And uh, I think the coolest thing about my customer base is they allow me to carve to my potential. And um, that's why you see a lot of crazy things come out of my shop. And uh, people are just like, yeah, man, just do whatever, you know? And uh, so I do, and they allow me to do so and um, it pays the bills and it makes me happy and it makes them happy. 
And so hopefully it made everybody at home or at work or wherever you are, hopefully you're not driving a car watching this, that would be not good. But if you uh, really enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe to my channel and we'll see if we can't get some more cool stuff coming your way soon. Thanks and thanks for seeing what I saw. Bit of inside information here. The uh, the owners have a construction company and these are a couple of their um, employees. Really cool guys. <clears throat> they were hilarious. Um, <laughs> it's very hilarious. We had a lot of fun doing it and uh, through some teamwork we we're able to just, you know, it went up real easy. Um, I prepared the customer, to, you know, as to what she needed to do. So this um, piece is also, it's resting on a, like a mantle type thing up, mounted to the wall. So it rests on the wall, uh, rests on the mantle, and then we also screwed it to the wall. Um, all the studs were already pre-measured and we got her done. The next thing was for me to get up there and put the talons on and the head and put all the feathers in place. And I was just like, man, I am so close to being done. So close. Again, you can see it's all washed out. The camera is just horrible at picking up colors. But um, yeah, it believe me, it looked like a serious, seriously, it looked like a bronze. Well, this is a fine example of one of the things I like to say, and that is, never let the wood win. My name is Jeff Moore. I am the Northwoods Carver, and thanks for seeing what I saw.